to my channel and welcome to my channel if you are new. My name is Carrie and today I am bringing you a video that's a little different from the videos that are on my channel. Today I am bringing you my experience modeling in Cape Town, South Africa. So some of you may know I was in Cape Town from October 27, 2019 to January 27. And I just wanted to share with you my entire experience when I was there working as a model. Okay, my journey to Cape Town began from Barbados because I am a Bajan. And I registered as a cultural practitioner with the NCF, which is the National Cultural Foundation of Barbados. And I was blessed to have my flight and part of my accommodation covered by them. So this made it way easier on my trip because accommodation in Cape Town, especially if you want to be in a safe area where you can get around to your castings and shoots and commercials and everything, you need to be in a decent area. And the prices there were a little pricey. So thankfully, I was sponsored by NCF to have that covered or partially covered. So I actually flew from Barbados to Canada to meet my husband because our tickets got crazy messed up before he even left for Canada. So he was in Canada for a good three weeks before I was there. And oh, it wasn't even the tickets that messed us up. It was my visa, my work visa for Cape Town. I had to wait until my papers were cleared, until I got my visa, before I could even leave Barbados. So it took me three more weeks to get that done, which means I had to push my ticket back and his ticket back, which was costly. But it was done. Um, I met him in Canada and then spent a few days in Canada just prepping to get a few more things for my trip like certain outfits, certain sandals as I had a guide from my agency which I'm going to show you right now. Basically, prior to my arrival, what I needed to do, um, the apps that I needed to have, how much money I needed to have to be in Cape Town for three months, the safety of Cape Town, areas to avoid, areas to be careful in, areas to work out in, the bookers that I will be meeting, and basically like everything I needed to know came in this booklet. I also received for the because I was an on-stay model which means I was going to be there for living for three months so there was a specific amount of things that I needed to work for three months. So this booklet included like the types of clothing that I needed for certain shoots, certain castings, dresses, everything. So this was the perfect guide. And then the journey continues. <laughs> so from Canada, it took about eight hours to fly to London. And then from London, it took 13 hours to get to Johannesburg, South Africa. And then another two hours from Johannesburg to Cape Town. So it was, let's scratch the Barbados flight, but that's part of the journey, but let's just say from Canada to Cape Town. Three planes, three planes, and a lot of time, a lot of time. So in total, the travel was like almost 30 hours, and okay, am I exaggerating? I could be exaggerating. <laughs> But, um, yeah, it was a long time, especially, I've, it's been my longest flight. I've never been on a plane for 13 hours, but luckily it was overnight. And because of the shift in the times, I was trying to sleep at what time it would have been nighttime in South Africa, so that when we landed, I wouldn't be as jet lagged. And I got this advice actually from my husband's mom's friend who has been to Cape Town multiple times. We landed in Cape Town and we got an Uber straight to where we were staying the first half of the stay. I was staying in Mully Point, which is kind of at the tip of Green Point. And Mully Point and Green Point are like some of the top areas to stay in South Africa for safety. Um, there's also Sea Point. There's also um, Zone Blom, Zone Blom. I think, and the, the gardens, which are more central Cape Town, but I stayed in the Greenpoint, Mully Point area. 
and I enjoyed it because as soon as we stepped out of our place, the beach was right opposite. As soon as you went on the beach side, you looked over. The mountains were there. Cape Town was just the most beautiful place I've ever been in my entire life. Like, ever. And I mean, maybe I haven't been many places. And I consider Barbados like one of the top places or the top because Barbados has my heart. But Cape Town was just aesthetically pleasing. It was just so beautiful there. And just to step outside and be in that beauty every day was just insane to me. So I remember when we got to the Airbnb, the guy was like, all right, guys, so it's time to dress down. And to us, we were dressed down. <laughs> you know what I mean? But he was like, people are going to know you're tourists. You don't want people to know you're tourists because then you'll be a target. And we were like, okay, we're taking any advice and every piece of advice we could get from everyone, right? As soon as I landed, I had to go to my first casting. As soon as I landed. So on the plane, I had my hair in twists prepped and ready to open and be ready for my casting. And the thing is, it was weird because I feel like where we stayed was the tourist place. So there were people who were always dressed up. And I don't know, but I took his advice. So, like I was saying, my first casting was on the day I landed. I had to get dressed, undo my hair, get prepped and ready to head to my casting. I had no comp cards, I had no nothing because I haven't met with my agency yet. I haven't even met my agent yet at this point. I just knew I had to get to this casting. So, I ordered an Uber because it's recommended to Uber everywhere. Uber everywhere. <laughs> um, it's recommended to Uber everywhere and not to take the bus, especially as like if I'm going by myself. And most of my castings, I had to go by myself anyway, so I had to Uber. I got in my Uber, my first Uber in Cape Town by myself because I Ubered with Brooke, my husband, from the airport to the apartment. But my first Uber by myself was with a lady, and thankfully so because. She gave me a lot of tips and tricks to stay, to stay safe when I was alone, especially because I was going into now the town of Cape Town, literally the city center. So she told me, if anyone asks you for the time, do not give them the time. Do not pull your phone out and give them the time. Don't do it. And she also told me, make sure I Uber it everywhere. Um, just don't have your phone out when you're walking up and down. You know, just a lot of things that I needed to know anyways. Thankfully, she gave me those tips. So anyways, I get to my casting now. I do my casting. It went great. I didn't book the job. Um, but it was fun to be in the environment anyways, especially because this is my first casting in Cape Town. It was great to see the other models and see like what my competition was going to be like for the season and stuff like that. So... The next day, I finally got to rest. <laughs> I got a rest day. I got a rest day. And it was amazing. And even though it wasn't really fully arrested because it, I still had to prep for meeting my agent the next day and like meet with the agency and stuff like that, it was still a rest day. I still didn't have to like fly anywhere, drive anywhere, well, Uber anywhere, go to a casting, like anything. So I went and I got a wax that day and you know just prepped and ready to meet my agent <laughs> and then the next day was the day that I finally met my agent at the agency and Sean from Top Cool Models she was amazing that's my agent there and I felt like I met the dream team I felt like they had my best interest in mind they allowed me to be open, they allowed me to say what I wanted to see with my brand and it was just lovely. So that day I took Polaroids because they needed fresh Polaroids because I had taken Polaroids from Barbados but they needed fresh Polaroids of me in person now. So we took my Polaroids, we did my welcome videos, my introduction videos and then we set a date which was an, the day after for training for the Cape Town industry 
and um, I know we do a lot of model training wherever we are in the world but Cape Town is a different market so I had to be trained on the Cape Town market oh 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 I did not even mention my biggest mistake when I met my agency I had my hair I have retwisted my hair after the casting so when I met them my hair was in a twist out and they were like hmm your hair is supposed to be more African you know like we wanted your fro we, we like when you took your Polaroids at home in Barbados and your fro was just like freshly washed and it was just like right so I was in the bathroom before my Polaroids at the agency like spraying water in it trying to get my curls to like not be um, manipulated because obviously with the twist out your curls are manipulated and I'm in the bathroom like spraying water Annie She's one of the trainers at Topco. She gave me like a water bottle and she's like, do you need help? Because she has curly hair too. So it was so nice to meet somebody and have somebody at the agency who kind of understands our hair and stuff like that. So she gave me a water bottle. She was like, do you need anything else? And I'm in the bathroom. I was like, no, I'm good. I can do this. I can make it happen. And I was in the bathroom just like, like trying to get my fro to the fro that they wanted because that's when they signed me. They signed me with my fro. You know, they didn't sign me with a twist out they didn't sign me on to come to South Africa with manipulated curls so that was my first mistake and I mean it was probably like my only mistake in Cape Town but at least it was right at the beginning and I got to rectify that like instantly so after this day at the agency I remember stepping outside waiting for my uber checking my phone on the inside of the building and as soon as I stepped outside as soon as I stepped outside, there's these two guys in a truck in like a container, um, like a shipping, not a shipping truck, like a, like a U-Haul type truck. And they look at me, they're like, sis, what time is it? Remember I told you guys that literally just the day before when I first landed, a lady who picked me up in the Uber told me if anyone asks for the time, don't give them. So I was like, nope, I don't have the time. I do not have the time. I'm sorry. I don't have the time. And I just went right back in the building to wait for my Uber because that for me just showed me how real this stuff was. You know what I mean? On my first day at the agency, on my first day at the agency, it happened. What if I didn't meet that lady the day before? What if like, <laughs> anyways, guys, like that was my first like experience. I was like, <gasps> So then the next day came and I had training with Annie and training with her was so awesome. To learn the Cape Town industry and how to approach your castings, how to research when you get a casting call, like the brand and stuff like that so you know what you're going into. Um, she taught me about colors to wear because Cape Town is a very colorful place and I'm so accustomed to black and white, like when it comes to casting say in Canada or in Miami or in Barbados like I feel like models are so accustomed to simple black tank simple white tank but in Cape Town they're more vibrant they're more they like to see your skin pop so they like to see what colors make that happen and speaking of colors I was actually a little offended when I found out that I was not considered black in Cape Town I found out that day that I was considered a colored person and that colored and black were totally different things and it made me a little sad with this training and that day I also did my um another introductory inter introductory video it was in a fun yellow dress and I love about Cape Town that you don't always have to be in heels it's such a commercial place so again it's not like what I'm accustomed to which is like heels black white no they like converse they like sneakers they like flip-flops they like whatever the look is you know I don't know how to explain it but they like different and I like that so we went out we went to a little neighborhood down the street and we filmed that so I'm gonna play that right now
which was an amazing day at the agency again. Um, my agents just sent, my bookers and my agents just sent me out for test shoots and test videos to get my portfolio up to the Cape Town standard and what people look for in Cape Town because my portfolio was more, let's say, Barbados, Miami, and they wanted more of a Cape Town look. So for the next week or two, that's what I was doing. I was out doing test shoots. I was out doing test videos you know, just getting that stuff together and, you know, having a casting here and there throughout. Now the casting started to come through. I'm grateful for that because I went there to work, you know what I mean? The casting started to come through. And I remember I booked my first job, which was so crazy because this was my first time ever going up for a casting where I went in to be like a teacher. And they wanted like a young teachers. I remember that casting. It was for NG, which is an energy company, like electric electric utility energy company. And um, yeah, so I got that. Well, I went to the casting. I went to the call that, and I booked the job. And that was my first job in Cape Town. And it was so cool because, again, like I said, it was a young teacher, and they had all the kids. <laughs> And it was so adorable because I met so many kids that live in Cape Town. So like just being around that type of culture was fun because most of the kids, like I said, who were booked were from there. They lived there. And I just love the accent. I just love talking to them, even though sometimes you can't understand what they're saying. But it was just fun. Like That was a fun job, you know. And um, I haven't seen that commercial yet. I'm still waiting to see that one. But... You know, I'm gonna see it soon. After that, again, more casting started coming through, more more booking started coming through. I started working with Sissy Boy, which is like a let's say kind of like a Forever 21 of Cape Town, but not quite at the same time. Because I think Mr. Price is more like a Forever 21 of Cape Town, but. Sissy Boy was pretty pretty big. Everyone knew them. I booked an e-com job with them, which was putting on jeans, taking pictures of jeans, tops, dresses, jumpsuits, belts, and stuff like that. Um, I will insert a few pictures so you can see what that was like. Then I booked a job that I was so happy about, which was Red Tide Clothing. I remember the casting. I remember going in. I remember feeling so good about it. I remember having the best energy exchange with the casting directors and it was it was awesome when I got that I was like Ooh. so that job was we literally shot on a boat on in the seas of Cape Town for two days it was so difficult for me because I get seasick and the seas of Cape Town are so rough like so rough <laughs> but um that job was so fun i actually have a clip of it that i'll put in and um yeah red tie clothing that was definitely fun the second day of the shoot actually i took um you know the motion sickness tablets and i felt like that kind of messed up my energy on the second day because it makes you kind of sleepy and stuff like that so I felt like even though it was fighting the sickness it was really hard to fight the the ener the low energy that I had and that job actually made me really sick because the end of that shoot on day two they asked us to jump in the water and we saw we saw two sharks <laughs> we saw two shark sharks we saw dolphins we saw um those sunfish on on the two days of shooting so they asked us to jump in the water and that was like oh my gosh i come from barbados where's water warm <laughs> and we don't really got sharks like that you know what i mean but it was with a couple other people so it was cool the water temperature was minus 38 degrees celsius which is minus 36 degrees fahrenheit yeah that's we so we went from the hot blazing sun outside to jumping in this this water <sighs> listen guys I was so sick for two weeks after that I felt like I was gonna die I won't even lie I had the worst fevers 
I couldn't really walk. Getting out of bed was hard. Like, my body was aching and stuff like that. But I still had castings to attend. So, I remember feeling slightly better about a week after that job. Slightly better. And my agent, sorry, my booker, Claire, she booked my TVCs, which is TV commercials. And she booked me for a casting for Lipton Iced Tea. And I had known it was for Lipton Iced Tea. And I had this yellow dress and this blue bikini that I didn't get to wear yet in Cape Town. And my husband's like, are you sure you can do this? I don't think you can do this. And I'm like, walking to the bathroom like, I have to do this. I have to do this. I can't let my booker down. You know what I mean? And I went to the casting. And the next day, they called me and told me that I booked the job. And I mean, like, I wanted to book the job, but I still wasn't feeling really good. So something in me was like, oh my god, I was kind of hoping I didn't get it. Like, I was just going because I knew I had to go. And now I gotta fester up the energy again to get through the shoot days. <laughs> but I did it. The sun is so scorching it's literally burning your skin so sunblock is a must because i mean sunblock is a must in the cold in the heat anywhere sunblock is just a must for me but the heat there was insane it was crazy i made it through the shoot look i'll just pop in some clips and then i'll put the commercial at the end i'll put some music over it this was now coming down to coming down to the end of my trip so this is like December 17th not really coming down to the end of my trip but coming down to kind of the end of castings because I was leaving on January 27th I didn't get my extended work visa because originally I was supposed to be in Cape Town for six months I was supposed to leave in April but I didn't get my work visa extension in time so my trip was gonna be cut short anyways to leave on January 27th I still went to castings I still did what I can because as a model you gotta show up you gotta show up you know what I mean and at that time I wasn't sure if I was gonna get my extension or not so I was just doing what I had to do still going to my photo shoots enjoying Cape Town enjoying everything that Cape Town has to offer because oh that place is so beautiful and Brooke and I, we had these two friends, another couple, and we did so many things. So I'm even going to insert a clip of some of the places that we went to and that we enjoyed just between everything. And we even climbed Lion's Head Mountain, and that was really fun too. I remember my last job being for a yoga company, a yoga um, apparel company, and that was a one full day shoot. I had to be at the beach for 5 a.m. and I finished around 5 p.m. That was like a 12 hour day. And in Cape Town, you know how like if you're in Canada or Barbados or something, a day of work is considered an 8 hour day. In Cape Town, it's more like 10 to 12 hours is considered the work day. So not every time do you get overtime and I think it depends on the company because a lot of companies come to Cape Town to shoot for the summer um, because of the aesthetic and the environment the location everything so I think it depends on the company too but let's just say that the average workday is about 10 to 12 hours which is a lot that's a lot on a model that's a lot on a person but that's what it was they didn't even use the shots like with me and another two girls they did not even use it they reshot everything and I mean that's fine apparently they changed the whole team the whole crew I don't think they were happy with the 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 crew and hey they paid me because work is work. I showed up, I did the job, right? But they reshot the entire campaign. And that's fine, that happens. So coming down to the end of it, everything happened so quickly because I was waiting up until the day to find out if I got my extension. And I found out the two days before I left Cape Town that I wasn't going to get my extension in time, my work visa extension in time. So I literally had to change flights rebook everything, pack up my entire Cape Town life 
you know, go return my, um, my portfolio to my agency, go see my agency, go say bye, you know, and like do so many things. And during this time too, I was actually working on my permanent residency for Canada. So there was just a lot going on. It was bittersweet. Um, I was sad that I was leaving Cape Town, but it was nice to have something to look forward to when I landed back in Canada because I would be landed as a permanent residency, which meant that I was, you know, like expanding my career even more. But COVID. <laughs> but still, at that time, there was no COVID. So I was like looking forward to being able to work in Canada and do stuff. There were just, there were just so many moments and so many memories from Cape Town. And I just, I would definitely go back a hundred and like a thousand percent. The only thing is, is that I feel kind of bad about taking jobs from the people who are there because I feel as though, yeah, there are opportunities for everyone, but seeing the poverty there just made my heart hurt so much. And knowing that there could have been a model who lives in Cape Town who needed this money or who needed this job that could have been doing it but I booked it and that's fine because again there's something for everyone and when somebody sees when a client sees somebody they want they see somebody they want you know but things it was just things like that that made me a little like I don't know if I want to go back you know just for that reason but I do want to go back because the opportunities were amazing as well and I don't know we'll see I think that if COVID was a thing that I would be there right now but COVID's a thing so well, let me show you guys one of my first comp cards there I don't have my second comp card but this is my first one but this is the hair that they, they were talking about this is the hair they like I did find the other comp card so this is it these were some of the prints Some of them were double prints. And some of these were shot by the agency photographer. And some of these were. But you guys see the hair? model tips in South Africa and not just in South Africa but everywhere just some model tips on basically how to put your best foot forward how to always be prepared and things that I've learned throughout the years of my journey as a model so let me know if you guys want to see that and tell me what you guys thought about this video did you enjoy it and would you like to see more stuff like this also subscribe if you haven't subscribed already and thank you for helping me grow on this channel. I hope you enjoy this video and I'll see you next time.